just dropped a new paper, Native Sparse Attention, or NSA. It's all about making A. I process long text faster without losing its smarts. Standard attention is like trying to read every single word in a massive book before making a decision. Slow and exhausting. NSA changes the game by being selectively smart. It compresses unnecessary details, picks out the most important information, and it keeps an eye on nearby words for context. The result? Up to 11.6 times speed ups while still beating full attention models. So, how does it actually work? Let's jump in! Let's start by talking about a key challenge in modern language modeling. Handling really long contexts. You know how the attention mechanism in Transformers grows in cost as we increase sequence length, right? That becomes a serious problem when dealing with huge amounts of text. So here comes an approach called Natively Trainable Sparse Attention, NSA, a method that aims to make sparse attention more efficient, both in terms of hardware and training, without sacrificing performance. Here's the basic idea. NSA compresses tokens at a coarse level to get a broad overview of the context, then selects the most important tokens at a finer level. This design helps the model keep track of both the bigger picture and the intricate details. The paper makes two major contributions, an efficient algorithm tailored for modern hardware, striking a balance between speed and accuracy, full end-to-end -end training support, which helps cut down on computational costs during pre-training, yet still keeps performance on par with full attention. Early experiments show NSA can match or surpass the results of full attention. This advantage is most clear on tasks with longer contexts, instruction-based reasoning, and general benchmarks. There's also a notable speed-up for extremely long sequences when generating outputs or doing forward-slash-backward passes. Why is this so important? Well, more and more applications, like code generation or multi-turn conversations, require the model to handle large contexts. Traditional attention can technically do it, but at a huge computational cost. Sparse attention methods like NSA offer a promising solution to keep things both fast and accurate. As we dig deeper, Notice how handling long sequences creates a big bottleneck for transformer-like models. Softmax attention over really long inputs often ends up dominating runtime, taking 70 to 80% of the total latency. Naturally, researchers have tried various sparse methods to only compute the critical query key interactions, but many of these are geared toward inference only and don't speed up training. Even worse, many fail to deliver the speedups they promise on paper. N. NSA tackles these problems head-on, it first makes sparse attention more hardware-friendly by mitigating memory bottlenecks. Then it maintains full trainability, so the sparse operators are part of end-to-end -end learning, reducing training cost. Look at figure one here. The first chart shows NSA outperforming full attention on various benchmarks, general tasks, long context tasks, and reasoning, even though it's a sparse model. The second chart is all about speed. NSA is up to 11.6 times faster when decoding, nine times faster in forward passes, and six times faster in backward passes on long sequences. To get these results, NSA structures keys and values hierarchically, doing coarse compression, fine-grained selection, and sliding windows for local context. Specialized kernel optimizations help break past the usual limitations of sparse attention. So how does NSA process inputs? It uses three separate attention branches to capture different levels of detail. Compression for a broad, high-level overview of the sequence. Quote, Key token selection for focusing on the crucial parts. Quote. Sliding window for local context. Check out the right side of figure two to see how NSA skips unimportant areas. The green blocks show where it actually computes attention scores. The white blocks are ignored, saving a ton of compute. Hardware efficiency is a big focus here. NSA aligns memory accesses and compute operations to take advantage of things like tensor cores. Plus, it's meant for full training, not just inference, so it integrates seamlessly into end-to-end -end pipelines. In their experiments, the team trained a massive 27 billion parameter transformer on 260 billion tokens. NSA was as good or better than full attention in accuracy while running much faster, especially for longer sequences. But first, the authors highlight a big flaw in many sparse attention methods. They apply sparsity only at inference, using full attention during training. Business. This means the model can't truly capitalize on sparse computation throughout its life cycle. Next, they dive into the details of these inefficiencies. Here, the paper calls out two reasons why sparse attention often fails in real-world scenarios. One. Many methods optimize certain phases of inference, like decoding, but leave other phases running as slowly as full attention. That undermines the overall speed gain. 
2. Many sparse methods aren't built to work with modern architectures like multiple query attention, MQA, or grouped query attention, GQA. Because these methods share key value pairs across heads to minimize memory, any sparse scheme that disrupts this sharing kills efficiency. So the authors argue for a better approach, one that marries smart algorithms with hardware-friendly execution. Enter NSA. They then pivot to trainable sparsity, noting that lots of sparse models are used only after pre-training. That approach can cripple performance. If you throw out 80% of attention heads post-training, you risk losing important retrieval structures, weakening the model. Training cost becomes another bottleneck. Models keep getting bigger, needing long contexts, yet few sparse approaches handle how to train with sparsity effectively. Some attempts at trainable sparse attention use discrete selection, like clustering or simhash. But that often breaks the computational graph or makes backprop super inefficient. Scaling remains a problem. All these issues underscore the need for a fully trainable, end-to-end -end sparse attention solution. The conversation moves on to another pain point, memory access. Techniques like hash attention might randomly fetch lots of tokens from memory, messing up the tidy patterns that modern accelerators need for maximum speed. For instance, flash attention relies on well-structured memory access to shine. Scattergather approaches break that efficiency. So these methods often end up slower than expected. That's why the paper calls for a new perspective on sparse attention, one that's natively sparse during both training and inference. Next, the methodology section explains the basics of self-attention highlighting how each query compares itself to all previous keys to assign relevance. You know the problem. If your sequence is huge, you get a combinatorial blow-up in comparisons. The paper then explains arithmetic intensity, the ratio of compute to memory bandwidth. Training is compute-heavy due to matrix multiplications, but during inference, especially in autoregressive decoding, the model often loads the entire key-value cache repeatedly, so memory access is the real bottleneck. NSA strives to address both reducing compute during training and limiting memory overhead in inference. How does NSA actually do the sparse thing? It doesn't just prune tokens. It restructures them for more compact representation. Essentially, for each query, NSA constructs optimized key value blocks on the fly. It does so with three remapping strategies. Compress certain keys and values into bigger blocks. Select crucial keys using a learned gating mechanism. Use a sliding window approach to keep track of local context. All three are integrated via a gate function to decide which strategy to apply. One essential trick is token compression. Instead of dealing with each key alone, NSA groups them and compresses them into a single representation that captures the block's overall meaning. A learned function ensures these compressed blocks stay meaningful, preserving the structure of the original tokens. There's also a sliding stride. X. That's how many tokens overlap between adjacent blocks, making sure the compressed representations don't lose important context. The result? Fewer computations, but still a strong grasp of the sequence's high-level patterns. But wait. Simple compression can miss critical details. That's why NSA employs blockwise selection, processing key value sequences in continuous blocks rather than one token at a time. This matters because GPUs thrive on continuous memory access. If we skip around randomly, performance tanks, but blockwise layouts let hardware tools like flash attention run smoothly. Which blocks get selected? NSA reuses the intermediate attention scores from compression to figure that out. If compression and selection blocks match exactly, transferring these important scores is straightforward. If not, the model adjusts them based on spatial relationships, ensuring attention lines up correctly. For grouped query attention, GQA, or multiple query attention, MQA, each group of heads shares the same key value cache, so the block selection has to be consistent across heads. NSA aggregates the important scores across these heads, making sure the model picks the right blocks in a stable, synchronized way. Putting compression, selection, and grouped attention together creates a sparse attention mechanism that's efficient on hardware and still captures the information the model needs. Next, NSA applies top-n block selection, picking the most relevant blocks based on important scores. That way, the model zeroes in on what matters most, ignoring the noise. Now, what about local context? Transformers sometimes over-rely on the most recent tokens, forgetting long-distance dependencies. To counteract this, NSA uses a sliding window mechanism as a separate attention branch. Local detail gets handled there, while the main branches, 
compression, and selection, focus on broader context. A learned gating function merges these three branches, compression, selection, and sliding window, into a cohesive attention distribution. Also crucial is a specialized kernel design to reach flash attention level speeds. Many attention methods struggle with memory access, especially in GQA or MQA setups. NSA carefully groups queries for memory efficiency, ensuring all heads in a group share the same sparse key value blocks, less overhead, more speed. Put it together, top end block selection, sliding windows, and an optimized kernel design. That's how NSA manages to be both speedy and effective. Building on that, NSA refines how memory is accessed during training and inference. Its kernel loads queries under grouped query attention, GQA, so multiple attention heads share the same sparse key value blocks. That leads to less repetitive data fetching. Then there's shared KV fetching, which sequentially loads continuous key value blocks into on-chip memory, cutting down on the time wasted scanning slower memory. Finally, NSA uses outer loop on grid to distribute queries and outputs in parallel. Triton's grid scheduler can then more effectively balance workloads across GPU processors. Once these optimizations are in place, the paper presents experiments evaluating NSA in three areas. General performance on standard benchmarks, long context tasks, chain of thought reasoning. For pre-training, they follow typical LLM setups. The backbone uses GQA plus mixture of experts, or MOE, with 27 billion parameters total, though only 3 billion are active at a time. It has 30 layers, each with a 2560 hidden dimension. In GQA, queries are grouped into four sets, distributing 64 heads among them. Each head has a hidden size of 192, and values use 128 dimensions. The MOE portion has 72 experts, plus two shared experts, and selects the top six for each token. The very first layer replaces the MOE module with a more stable MLP using SWE glue activation. This helps early training stability. Training huge models is tough. You want to cut cost without hurting accuracy. NSA tries to do exactly that. If you look at the pre-training loss curve, NSA tracks or beats full attention, showing lower loss through training. That signals NSA learns efficiently while retaining strong performance. They test NSA against full attention on multiple benchmarks. Things like MMLU, General Knowledge, GSM-8K, Math Reasoning, and Human Evil, Coding. NSA consistently does better on average. The compression block size here is set to 32, with a stride of 16, and a sliding window of 512 tokens. They train on 270 billion tokens of 8K length sequences, then fine tune on 32K sequences for better long context abilities, using a technique called YARN. Finally, the authors compare NSA with other top sparse attention methods, H2O, INFLLM, Quest, and Exact Top, each of which tries to pick out the highest scoring key positions. Next, we see how NSA stacks up against them. Check out the comparison table here. It lists NSA side by side with other methods on tasks like question answering, synthetic benchmarks, and code challenges. Across the board, NSA stays competitive or outperforms these methods, sometimes even surpassing full attention. For broader tasks, NSA maintains or improves accuracy without chewing up too much compute. It shines in logic-heavy benchmarks like DROP or GSM-8K, beating full attention. This suggests the sparse attention approach in NSA helps the model focus on the truly relevant parts of the sequence while ignoring the noise. When we hit the long context tasks, NSA's advantage really pops. Imagine a 64K context needle in a haystack challenge. The model has to sift through a huge text to find one key piece of info. NSA's hierarchical approach balances a global scan via compression and precise retrieval via selection, enabling it to handle long documents efficiently. Speaking of that needle in a haystack test, NSA scores perfectly at retrieving information from a 64,000 token context. If you look at the model's attention patterns, you'll see that it leverages compression to check the broader context while using selection blocks to grab the critical details. Traditional attention often chokes on such long sequences. NSA also aces mathematical reasoning. After fine-tuning it with 32,000 token math datasets, they tested on the AIME24 benchmark, which demands multi-step logic rather than just straightforward retrieval. The results show strong average correctness, reinforcing that NSA excels not just at looking up relevant snippets, but at weaving them into coherent reasoning.
Let's talk about speed now. In a supervised fine-tuning scenario for math reasoning, NSA beats full attention for sequence lengths of 8K and 16K, delivering faster reasoning and stable accuracy. And when you look at super long sequences, like 64K tokens, NSA's forward pass can be up to nine times faster with a 6X boost in backward pass speed. That's a major performance leap for large-scale tasks. Why is NSA so quick? It smartly curates which tokens to attend to, cutting down on wasteful memory operations and harnessing GPU resources better. Full attention tries to read everything equally, whereas NSA narrows its focus to the essential stuff. That optimization yields significantly lower latency and resource usage. Another key factor here is memory access. Usually, full attention needs to fetch all key value pairs from the KV cache, even those that barely matter, leading to major slowdowns. NSA changes the game by focusing on relevant tokens only. Depending on how long the context is, you get a speed up of anywhere from 4x to over 11x. Before settling on NSA, researchers attempted other sparse strategies involving key clustering. On paper, clustering sounds efficient, but in practice, it introduces overhead with reclustering steps, disrupts mixture of experts balancing, and can become cumbersome for real use cases. So the takeaway? Sparse attention isn't just about ignoring tokens, it's about being clever in how you select the information you do keep. NSA's design nails that. Now look at figure eight. It shows that attention scores naturally form clusters in a blockwise pattern. Transformers don't attend to tokens in a completely scattered way. They often latch onto contiguous regions. That insight was the inspiration for NSA's blockwise approach. Other methods, like Quest or INFLLM, tried ranking key value pairs by query similarity, but ranking isn't differentiable. They ended up using extra loss functions or heuristics, which added complexity or missed critical tokens. If you check out figure seven, you'll see NSA's training loss curves beating both full attention and these other sparse methods. That means blockwise token selection can yield better training outcomes with less hassle. Finally, let's briefly highlight some other efficiency techniques you might have come across, like fixed sparse patterns, dynamic token pruning, and query-aware selection. Each tackles the memory bottleneck differently. Fixed sparse patterns limit attention to a predefined window around each token. This can save compute, but risks losing broader context. Dynamic token pruning, used in approaches like H2O or SnapKV, discards tokens that seem unimportant as the sequence unfolds. It's good for memory savings, but can sometimes miss key info. Query-aware selection, as in Quest, INFLLM, or hash attention, tries to find only the tokens that matter for the query, sometimes via clustering, but it can be tricky, requiring non-differentiable steps or heuristics. In contrast, NSA merges token compression and blockwise selection so it can train end-to-end, -end, run quickly on modern hardware, and stay accurate over long sequences. With that, we wrap up this deep dive into how NSA offers a fresh, efficient take on sparse attention. Thanks for joining us today. Happy learning and stretching together.